Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So my lapel microphone that I've been using lately, uh, the battery's dead. So I'm using my trusty old uh, shotgun mic, it's called. So hopefully everyone will be able to hear me okay. Um, I just wanted to bring you guys out here today just to talk about something that I've had so many questions about. Um, and that is about my religion itself. You know, I started doing the scripture readings for Saturday mornings. I have a uh, weekly reading schedule that is on my website. You can get a free PDF of it. It has scriptures for every single day of the week. And then there are special readings for holidays, you know, biblical feasts and things like that. Um, and I just decided I would sit down and record the scripture readings for Saturdays. And for me, Saturday is the Sabbath, it's Shabbat. Um, I started keeping Shabbat a few years ago. Um, I, my faith journey has been a long one. Um, I've always been a studier. Uh, since the day I became a believer, I would study and just devoured scripture and my foundation was compare everything to scripture to be like a Berean compare all the teachings to the scripture and see if it lines up and there's been times in my life where that caused some problems because um, sometimes people don't like questions and if they have a tradition that isn't necessarily Biblical, it, it is sometimes not appreciated when you have questions about it. But one of the questions that I get a lot is, are you a Christian or are you Jewish? <laughs> but before I get into that, I have people who have been around here for a while and know that one of my hobbies up until a couple years ago was genealogy. I have spent decades studying genealogy, both of my family and my husband's family. You know, I had spent years, and, and I was doing this before the internet was a thing. Um, I, I spent years researching, doing the family tree. Seven of my eight great-grandparents all came here from Germany. Um, however, that one, oh my goodness, there's a giant snake down there. Let's look, see if we can get it on camera. All right, where did it just go? Oh, there it goes. Oh, he's after a fish. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, there's another one. All right, so just for the record, those are water snakes. They are non-venomous. Um, we have zero issue with snakes living here. Uh, we see snakes as friends because they help control the uh, pests, you know. Uh, we are very, very mindful, however, that this is Arkansas and there are lots of venomous snakes here. And so we are always on the lookout for them. So I don't want anyone to be worried um, about those particular snakes. Those are non-venomous. We, we give them their space. I mean, we still don't want to get bit by them, but um, we, we have no problem with those snakes being down there. And as you can see, the creek is really muddy, but it's a creek again. We got some rain this morning 
a, a good bit of rain and we're supposed to get more. It was actually sprinkling here a few minutes ago, which is why I'm up under the gazebo. Uh, I didn't want my camera to get wet. So as I was saying, seven of my eight great grandparents came here from Germany. Once my family records go to Germany, there's pretty much nothing else I can find. I think it's likely that a lot of the records were destroyed. I mean, there's there's been a few wars <laughs> in Europe, you know. Um, however, my one great-grandparent who is not German, that family line goes back to England. And for a long time, that family line was traced back really far, really far. But I couldn't find anything else. I, I got it back to that point and then for years, I couldn't find anything else. And then one day I had learned some interesting information, biblical history about the tribes of Israel, that when there was the dispersion, they were scattered to the four quarters of the earth and that it was possible that people could trace back their family tree to some of those who had been scattered. And I thought, well, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? And I actually prayed about it. I'm like, Lord, wouldn't that be neat if I saw that in our family tree? I think that would be really cool. Well, I prayed that after learning about it, sat down at my computer, and within an hour of my praying that, I found something very interesting because one of those dead ends in my English branch that I already knew went all over Europe it wasn't a dead end anymore, and I found some very interesting things. But going back to the question of am I Jewish, uh, the answer is no, I'm, I'm not Jewish. And just finding some interesting names in my family tree way back there certainly doesn't make me Jewish. Because to be frank, if you go back far enough, we're all related, okay? you're going to find where our family trees all meet somewhere, somewhere, because at one point there was only eight people on the planet. You know what I mean? So if you are able to dig back far enough, you are gonna find connections to just about anybody in history one way or another. But then what about my faith, right? Because I do have a lot of questions about some of the, um, of the things that I do, the, the, the holidays that I celebrate, biblical feasts. And so I'm just going to kind of give you a very short synopsis of who I am and what I believe. First of all, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. He is God in the flesh, the Son of God. He is the only way by which there is salvation. He was the perfect Passover lamb that paid the price for our sins that without him, there is no salvation. It doesn't matter how good we are. It doesn't matter how many feasts we keep. We cannot earn our salvation. So I wanted to make that very clear, that salvation only comes through faith in, in the one true God through his son, Jesus Yeshua. I became a born again believer, a Christian in 1996 and that started in this little tiny fellowship, this little tiny church in Germany, and has progressed over the years because when you are continually studying and you're continually learning, your faith isn't going to look the same five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, because you're continually learning. You're continually growing. You're not a baby anymore. You're moving through adolescence. You're, you're moving towards adulthood until you eventually come to a place where you're a little bit closer, but you're still not there because none of us have arrived. We're all still learning. We're all still seeking the Father. And if any of us thinks we've arrived and we've got all of the answers, we better look out because something's probably gonna happen that's just gonna shake you to your core and make you realize, wow, I thought I learned everything and I don't know nothing. We all know that the number one sin to be aware of and to watch out for is pride. But I became a believer in 1996 and for many years I was part of a particular denomination. 
uh, it was a very works-based denomination, even though they said they weren't, they, they kind of were. Um, however, I kept studying and I kept asking questions and I would look at scriptures and I'd say, well, what does this mean? And sometimes I would get a good answer, sometimes I wouldn't. And for a long time, I just kind of dismissed it to the fact that, well, I'm a baby Christian, I don't know anything, and these people know better than me. But then over time, some of the some of the answers I was being given just didn't line up with what the scripture said, or it completely contradicted scripture, or it just didn't make sense. And there were so many times when I would see something that made me question, well, what is this? And and when I would ask, you know, I, I would I would open up the scripture and I would point at something and I'm like, well, what are they talking about right here? And a lot of times the answer I would get would would be something along the lines of, oh, well, that's for the Jews, or, or oh, that's that's the Jewish, th that's a Jewish thing, or that's just Jewish stuff. You don't have to worry about that because you know we're Christians and we don't need all that. It bugged me because okay, if we don't need these things and these don't apply to us. Then, then why are some of these things being talked about in the last days, in the new kingdom? Like, where it says that we're going to be taught about the feasts, and we're going to be keeping the feasts in the millennial reign, when the Lord has already come back. If, if the feasts and all these things aren't for us, then why are we going to be celebrating them if they're not for us? There were just so many things that didn't make sense to me, and... I had a hard time with teachings that I just felt absolutely contradicted scripture, um, things that weren't making sense, um, and when people asked questions they were being belittled over it. I, I just, I didn't like it. And there were, were many, many other things that I'm not going to go into today at least. But I just felt like I needed to walk away from traditional church as we know it. And I think that journey really started around 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. Uh, I found this group of people in a Yahoo group, if you remember those. <laughs> It was just a small group of people and we studied the scripture together and it was so refreshing because for the first time I could ask questions about scriptures that didn't make any sense to me and I wasn't being belittled, I wasn't being ridiculed, I wasn't being told don't you dare question the man of God, I, I was told I was being rebellious, I wasn't being rebellious. I had questions and the answers I was being given, if I was being given them, didn't make sense because it didn't match what this said. And it was so refreshing that we were able to just discuss these things and dig into scripture together and just learn. And I will never forget, this was around the time I got my first um, Strong's Concordance and Bible Dictionary, which I talked about my study tools in another video recently. I'll put a link to that down below if you're interested. But it was the first time I had gotten one of those. And I remember I was reading through the scriptures one day and it was, it was all an Easter, uh, an Easter sermon. And I remember thinking, well, what is this word Easter? And, and why does our pastor always call Jesus the Passover lamb, but then we celebrate this thing called Easter? And I talked about this too a little bit in my Passover video. Um, well, I dug out my Strong's Concordance and I started looking up the word. And I realized that's not Easter, it's Passover. That's why Jesus was our Passover lamb. When the Hebrews were being saved from their bondage in Egypt by God, he had them sacrifice a lamb, put the blood over the doorpost, and everyone who went inside was safe. And Jesus is our Passover lamb, but this time the blood is applied to our hearts, to our souls, to our spirits, and, and washes us 
and saves us this time from the death penalty of sin. He's our Passover. And you know, I was taught in church that Easter was based on Passover. Well, if that was the case, then why didn't we celebrate Passover? Why did we celebrate this thing called Easter with eggs and rabbits? And in that group, uh, we just started studying. And we started studying the Christian holidays and their origins <laughs> and, their, and all of that. And that was about the time that there was a couple of books that came out that sort of delved in that, into that as well. And I realized that while the church I was a part of made a, a big deal about not following traditions of man and instead following the scriptures of God and his commandments, we sure followed a lot of man-made traditions. And, and that kind of began a whole new chapter for me. I began rejecting traditional Christian holidays um, I didn't see them as biblical. I did not feel comfortable um, celebrating them at all, particularly because when I was young and stupid, uh, I, I dabbled around in paganism a lot, and I saw too many things in common with those. And I know that this is one of those things that bothers people and, and everything, and that's fine. I'm not asking anybody to agree with me. This is my story, this is my journey, and this is what brought me to who I am today. And so I just could no longer, I could no longer in good conscience celebrate these holidays. And I remember talking to a friend of mine one time, and this was around 2009, she was a church friend, um, about the Passover thing, because it, it just really, it ate at me, it ate at me a lot. And I, I asked her, I'm like, okay, so if Jesus is our Passover lamb, and we are basing Easter on Passover, it's like our version of Passover, then why do we celebrate it with a ham? Because if we're basing it on Passover, the Jewish holiday, ham's not kosher. It didn't make sense. And she laughed, she thought it was hilarious what I was saying, but I was serious. I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. And from that point on, around 2009 is when I really left the traditional church. I, I just, I had too many questions and I wasn't getting answers. And I came to the conclusion, I have been taught so many things that are traditions. I want to just throw everything out and start from scratch. I did not throw out my faith because my faith is steadfast. I, I know who the Lord is. I know where my salvation comes from, but everything else I, I just felt had been convoluted and I just prayed and prayed and I just said, Lord, I'm going to start all over and I want you to show me what your word says and I don't want there to be any filters on my eyes and I actually envisioned like colored glasses that I had been seeing through for all these years and I wanted those gone. I wanted the Lord to make my eyes see what it was he had and what he was talking about with all of these things that I didn't understand. So around 2010, I had this revelation of we in the Western church make the mistake of reading scripture through Western eyes with Western theology, and Western traditions. When the Bible was written by Hebrews, and we should be reading the scriptures with Hebrew mentality and, and Hebrew thought and, and Hebrew perspective. And that's the only way we're really gonna understand what we're, what we're reading. And that is what really began me on this most current leg of my journey, trying to understand and trying to read the scriptures as they were written and as they were intended to be not with my American, German, European, whatever mentality and, and just preconceived notions. I wanted to read it as it was written by the God who directed the scribes, you know? And that 
really opened my eyes and helped me start understanding a lot more than I had. Then somewhere around 2014 is when I started celebrating Passover. I mean, I had given up doing Easter. I, I did not do that anymore. I still honored the sacrifice and resurrection. I was calling it Resurrection Day because I didn't know what else to call it. I just couldn't bring myself to calling it Easter. And if you don't know why, just do, do a little study on the word Easter and what the origins of that word is, and maybe you'll understand. Um, and, and that first year I did it, it was super simple. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I just felt like that's what I was supposed to do. And so from that point on, every year I have celebrated Passover. And for a long time, I didn't know anybody else who did. And then a few years after that, we were living in our homestead in Alabama, and the Lord just impressed upon me the Sabbath. And I, and this is something I have talked about in the past, um, here and there, how I would turn on the radio every single time. I would get in my truck and I would, the radio was on one of the Christian stations. It would be a song about rest every single time to the point that I would stick the key in the ignition and I would go, okay, what rest song is it going to be this time? And I would turn it on and it was a song about rest. I would get in my Bible and every single day opening my Bible, there was a scripture about rest. There was a scripture about the Sabbath, about keeping Shabbat, how important it was to the father. And I'm like, um, okay, I think I'm supposed to start keeping Shabbat. But I didn't do it for a while. I, I, I knew, I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Am I supposed to be doing this? I mean, I don't know anybody who does this. Am I crazy? Because I'm thinking it's just me. I'm like, I can't be the only one. I have to have something wrong. I, I can't be the only person who sees this. Why is it just me? Why am I crazy? Da 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 da. And you know, I can look back now and some people might just say it's a coincidence. I kind of think it wasn't. <laughs> but that year, during that time frame, I contracted Giardia and I was sick. I was about the sickest and most miserable I had been in, in my life. Even thought at that time, and I don't think I've told anybody this, I'm like, you know what? I was seeing rest. I was feeling convicted that I needed to do this. And I just kept on working and I just kept on doing things and I didn't, I wasn't obedient to, to what I felt I was being told to do. So I bet I got this Giardia because the Lord's like, if you're not gonna rest, I'm gonna make you. And that was about the time I'm like, okay, I get it and I'm gonna do this. And I did. And, and I said, even if I am the only person doing this and I don't know anybody doing it, I firmly believe that this is what the Lord wants me to do and I'm gonna do it. And in this same time frame of me starting to keep Shabbat, sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, uh, I was outside praying one day and I said, Lord, I just, I need a friend. I need a person in my life who, who sees these things too. I don't have that person. I said, if I am the only person doing this, and if I, if I am the only one, and I have to do this alone, I will do it to be obedient. I said, but I really wish I had somebody who I could talk to, somebody who is walking this out as well. And I just, I prayed. And do you know, I think it was the very next day, I know it was that week, but I think it was the very next day a lady I had met at a Bible study, because I, I wasn't part of any traditional church, but I still did attend a non-denominational Bible study from time to time. I went to like women's conferences and things like that because I did hunger for the fellowship. But this lady I had met in this 
group and I'd only met her a few times. I didn't really know her. I knew a little bit about her, what some people had told me about her, but what some people had told me about her wasn't actually accurate. Um, out of the blue, she called me. And I can't even remember what it was. She was asking, I think she asked me a question. It might have even been a chicken question. Um, but that led to conversation. And in a, in our conversation about chickens, <laughs> I learned that her family keeps the Sabbath. Not only her family, but that there were many families, that they had a house church, a home fellowship, and they all did it. And that there were others. And not just keeping the Sabbath, keeping Shabbat, they celebrated Passover. And I wasn't alone. <laughs> there, were, there were many, many families and uh, the Lord answered my prayer. You know, for a long time, I had wanted a house church because I felt like that was just, just in my mind, the perfect way of doing church. And, and here, not only was it a home fellowship, a house church like I'd always dreamed of having, but they were on the same journey, the same stretch of the path that I was just starting out on. So going back to the question of the day, am I a Christian? Am I Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. However, I believe that there is one God and he has one people. And when you come to faith in Jesus, Yeshua, you are grafted into that family tree and you become part of his people. And that this first part of the Bible, the big part, is not irrelevant, that it is meant for all of his people, not just the little part in the back. My walk may not look like other people's walk, and that's okay. I'm totally okay with it. I was okay with it when I thought I was the only one, when I thought I was crazy. But there's a lot of us, and there's a lot more than you would think, and it's a beautiful thing. Now there are denominations out there who have this same similar viewpoint of things. Just like within all of Christianity, you've got many, many different denominations. You've got people who have different focuses on things, um, things they disagree about, things that they do have in common. And that is the same way with this walk, I guess you could say, this, this way of life. Um, if you wanted to put a denominational label on what I am, I, I guess I would say messianic. I, I still, I kind of have a hard time with that too, because I just, I'm just a whole Bible believer. That's how I look at myself. I do have services that I watch online. They are messianic services. Um, I'll put a link to that down below if you're interested in it. Uh, there are some other teachers that I uh, really like, uh, one in particular. And I don't actually know what he considers himself, denominational-wise. Uh, I know he does reference the teachings as being of Hebrew origins or Hebraic origins. Um, but I just believe that God wrote his word for his people and that we have to have a balance of his Torah, which is his instructions for life, and grace, truth and grace. You have to have both, otherwise you get out of balance. That's how I see things. And we all have to show each other grace that we're not all gonna be on the same page. We're not. Uh, we're all on different stages of our journey and none of us have arrived. That, that's kind of like my motto with things, and I know I've said it before. None of us have arrived yet. We're all just doing our best, and I am doing my best to follow in the footsteps of my Messiah and to walk as he walked. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and that's what I'm trying to do. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me out here with 
cranky Mr. Nubs. I'll talk to y'all next time.